I don't think the, the lines are that clear. Um, we're, we're sort of in an evolutionary stage of um, both the existence of social media sites and what they mean in society and how the law deals with them. Uh, we're not going to talk a lot about the Supreme Court case in Quan versus City of Ontario because that dealt with some other issues, texting and um, privacy issues. But, and ownership but, of computers. But in that case, the Supreme Court was asked to, to establish certain general principles mm -hmm. that apply to the rights of privacy on electronic systems, personal systems. And the Supreme Court expressly declined to enter the fray because they said, we don't know yet where, where social norms are in this area, so how can we as the Supreme Court really create principles? And what we're seeing is that judges are making decisions based upon their own experiences, and they're often conflicting. It's not like you can discern a lot of principles. So you have r obligations to monitor, obligations to react, but you have limitations on what you can do and what you can see. You know, every employer now not every employer, but most employers that are sophisticated are coming out with social media policies and guidelines. And guess what? The National Labor Relations Board, hmm. right, which you don't think intuitively of as an agency that has anything to do with general private employment because they deal with um, issues related to collective bargaining and unionization, have stepped into the fray. Mm -hmm. And they are saying that these policies are unlawful because they restrain employee speech with respect to wages, terms, and conditions of employment.